truth, and life. Here is the Brother Leon Show. You better recognize. What's going on, listeners? This is your boy, Brother Leon, and you are tuning in to another episode of the Brother Leon Show. So today, guys, we are going to go in hard. Because the one thing that I want to entitle this episode, I want to call this, Who's Afraid of the Big Bad Prophet Part 2? Because the one thing I want you guys to understand is this, is that as the age that we are in right now, this age is an age of change. Never again will we see days like this. And that's the God knows truth. Because the one thing I want you to know is around the end of 2019, going into 2020, the word of the Lord was prophesied by many prophets that 2020 was going to be a year of clarity. Some of them even went to say 2020 vision, clear vision. And so you have to begin to look at what has been said. And then you have to line it up with scripture. Because now, with this election that we have had, and that America's choice has been President-elect Joe Biden, you got to begin to see how people are saying that is not the word of the Lord. But the one thing that I want you to know is this, is that God has a way of speaking through unconventional means. And that's the God knows truth. Because The one thing that I want you to see is even though God does speak through the prophet, and I'm going to give you that scripture, but God also has a way of speaking through things that are around us. Because the one thing that you got to realize about life is that life is seasonal as well as prophetic. And so the one thing that you got to realize is that even at times, the news media can be used As prophets, you got to also understand that the scientists can be used as prophets. If God wants to convey something, he will begin to reveal it and he will begin to reveal it to those who have the language to explain it and to convey it. But a lot of times I'm not going to lie. People get so caught up in church, and the crazy thing that I told you guys in season one of the Brother Leon show, when you had pastors who were fighting against the government, I told you that this was going to be the rise of the radicals. I told you that. I told you that it was going to be radicals on both sides, that there was going to be radicals in church because the church felt like, okay, you are violating my rights. You are violating my my right to religious freedom. But the crazy thing about it is that during the midst of a pandemic that we've never seen, ordinances were put in place to protect people. But yet, we still had our men of God, our priests, our pastors, fighting to have church doors open to put people in danger because of their religious freedoms. And some of us went for it. And so the war was fought. And I ain't going to lie, the governors got tired. I would too. I'm tired of getting sued. I'm tired of being on the news. I'm trying to protect people. But yet the Bible says that the shepherd gives his life for the sheep. And the one thing that you're going to see right now is that we are in a new normal. And those who have not heeded or believed the word of science are now suffering because even though people are still getting sick with coronavirus, you still got people out here saying, I'm not going to wear a mask. Blatant rebellion. And that's what I mean when I told you way back, you got to listen to that message that this was going to be the rise of the radical. And I told you that started in Florida. Started with Rodney Howard Brown, but he was the big cat to admit it, but it was a whole lot of little dudes who were doing the same thing. 
And so now you got to begin to see, okay, from there all the way up until now to the election. And now conspiracy after conspiracy after conspiracy after conspiracy. And the crazy thing about it is that even the news media and even people in government are saying that Joe Biden is going to be the next president. But yet you have people in church that have said, thus saith the Lord, President Trump is going to get a second term. The one thing that I want everybody, all you people, everybody, all of you people, I want you to listen. Go to Larry Reed Live and listen to the most recent interview that he did with Bishop Jordan. Because the one thing that you're going to see in that video is the reason why, and I'm going to explain it tonight, the reason why that word of the Lord did not happen. Because now that word of the Lord is in limbo. Because here's the one thing that I want you guys to understand is this, is that if God was with you, I'm serious. If God was with you, where is the proof? Where is the truth? If God is with us, then why is it that court case after court case after court case after court case is being lost? If God was with us, then why is it that we are praying to stop the voice of people in urban communities? Stop the vote. That's what's being said. Stop the steal. That's what's being said. But yet you're asking God with charismatic witchcraft because there were people on their knees, people proclaiming that God is going to turn this thing around, stop things, even though people have a right to choose. So what you're really asking, God, I want you to stop and silence and take away these people's right to choose. That's what's being said. When you really look at the language. So that's the one thing that I want you guys to see and understand that witchcraft is still prevalent, even in charismatic circles. And the thing that I made up my mind that I was going to do with our church, truth and life, urban ministry was we, we were going to decolonize our faith because you can't sit up here and tell me that you are a person of faith when you take and mix your faith with nationalism and white supremacy because white supremacy suppressed the black people's vote. But yet you trying to tell me, and some people have been convinced and drank the Kool-Aid that president Trump is the most pro black president. My question is why are you talking about Philly? Why are you talking about Detroit? And the crazy thing about it is that when it comes to urban cities, what has he said about urban cities? Seriously. What has he said about Africa? And we have Paula White calling forth angels from Africa and South America. What has he said about Puerto Rico? Seriously. But yet, we say that President Trump is King Cyrus, and I'm going to go there, yes. Let's get some scripture. Because this is the one thing that you need. And this is the one thing that I'm going to explain tonight. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 1 to 6. Thus saith the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holded, to subdue nations before him, and I will loose the loins of kings to open before him the two uh, levied gates, and the gates shall not be shut. I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee by thy name. I am the God of Israel for Jacob, my servant's sake and Israel, mine elect. I have called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. I am the Lord and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me that thou mayest know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. 
So that's the scripture that a lot of evangelicals and even word of faith people have been using to justify the spiritual side of President Trump's elected office and his presidency. But the one thing that I want you guys to understand is this, is that when you look at the history of King Cyrus, you also have to understand that it was in his best interest to take the religions of the day and make them prevalent in the takeover. So everybody had a part. That's the God knows truth. But the one thing that we have not seen, we have not seen the actions that were conducive for the blessing to be here in this country. Nor have we seen this with our president. Because the one thing that you got to realize is that there is an agenda. There is an evangelical agenda. And one thing that they will not say is that it's wrong to mix nationalism and Bible. And you can't sit up here and try to say that the Christian church or the evangelical church can begin to legislate lifestyle. Because like I said, even though this nation is founded upon Christian principles, this nation has different religions in it. And it's just not Christian. And like I said, hey, everybody is not going to be saved. Everybody is not going to be Christian. And that's the one thing that we have got to wake up to because God does want to bless our nation. God does want to bless our cities. But you also have to understand not only is God here, but also the devil is here as well. And the one thing about it is that we cannot get to the place where we feel as though that the ends justify the means or the means justify the ends. Seriously. So, My question to my evangelical brothers and sisters and the apostles and prophets, why is it that we have ignored the voice? Why is it that, okay, we're doing all of these things, but yet it still isn't going the way that we say we have faith for? And like I said on my previous episode, what if God is saying no? Because the Bible does say that God, he sets down one and places up another. I'm just paraphrasing scriptures. You know what I mean. It's in Psalms. So let me give you another scripture because here's the thing that has been said. Amos 3 and 7, surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. And this is what the scripture or the running scripture has been. But yet, at the end of the day, now the church is being made mockery of because here it is after election day and the word has not come to pass. So now everybody is saying, okay, we're going to wait for the courts or we're going to wait. We're not going to believe the media. We're going to wait till the electoral college. So my question is, how do you think that 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 is going to work out? Seriously. So what you're telling me is that the Electoral College is going to come together and take away 306 and six electoral votes. And, and all of a sudden, you know, Joe Biden's going to lose and, and Donald Trump is going to get a second presidency, a second term. So you're pretty much saying because. He is needed to stop abortion. He is needed to stop the Affordable Care Act. The Affordable Care Act has just been heard in court. Being heard right now. I don't know if a verdict has been dropped already or not. But the one thing that I can say about the Affordable Care Act is that it is for the welfare of the people. And the one thing that I will say this is that, and this is what Bishop Jordan has said, that no prophet, no prophet should be aligned with any political agenda. And that's the God knows truth. So, hey, what I'm going to say tonight, I'm telling you, look at the video on Larry Reed Live's platform, and that will give you 
the reason how some of these people that have spoken the word of the Lord are in limbo right now and some of them have missed it. Seriously. Because if it doesn't come to pass at the electoral college, then what do you say? Are you going to blame the Holy Ghost like I've heard some people? Are you going to sit up here and, 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 and actually admit that you spoke presumptuously? Because I'm going to be honest, there are some that are in straight up rebellion. But I'm going to tell you this, the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance, meaning basically God's not going to take it back. So you can have a rebellious prophet. You can have a renegade prophet. But there is definitely a difference. There's a true prophet of God, and then there's just a prophet. There are some who hear the word of the Lord, and then there are those who have given themselves over, you know, to, 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 to witchcraft, given themselves over to prediction, given themselves over to mixtures, mixtures of nationalism, mixtures of fear. And the crazy thing about it is that even though, even though elections in different states have been called for President-elect Joe Biden, they still will not believe. You got strong delusion. And the crazy thing about it is that people are, are right now exploiting it. So you mean to tell me that our version of King Cyrus, who's now causing division in the White House, firing people that don't agree with him. This is God's man. Seriously. So my question is, what do you say now you're starting to weaken our military? What do you say with that? People that don't agree, yo, we firing them. We getting rid of them. What do you say with that? Because the Bible says that evil communications corrupt good morals or good manners. What do you say with that? Because if your only agenda is getting rid of abortion, putting judges on the bench, trying to take out Roe versus Wade, trying to uh, uh, take out gay marriage, is something wrong. Because now you're willing, okay, these are the things that I want, and I don't care about the collateral damage. I don't care about other people's rights. I just care about this. And the crazy thing about it is that now you're starting to look like fools, all of you. Because now the world is making fun of us. The world is making fun of the church. I'm telling every black person, yo, if you following people like that, yo, you need to come out. Come out. Come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Black or white. Because you don't need to be putting your tithes into anything like that. Because all you're doing is financing your own oppression. And you can worship someplace else. You can go to a house that's going to have your best interest. You can go to a house that's going to represent you and your community. But yet, when you got places like this, the only focus is your spirit. Forget about your melanin. That's what they tell the black people. Oh, your race ain't important. Only thing that's important, you're a kingdom citizen. But yet, every other religion incorporates their heritage that they come from. You ain't going to sit up here and tell a Jew, a Jewish person, to forget about their skin, to forget about their heritage. Man, please. But why is it being brought to black people like that? And this is what I mean when I say you got those who talk about white blessing. Let's don't call white supremacy white supremacy anymore. Let's call it white blessing. And this is a white pastor with a multi-cultural church. I'm going to tell you, man, yo, I told you on another episode that this preach game is like the drug game. And it sure enough is. But we, man, we up here gullible because we don't read. And we take anything that sound like black, that can shout like black, that can sing like black, that can talk like black, but they ain't black. And I'm going to say like Paul Mooney said, 
And I know you're going to get offended. Everybody want to be a nigga, but don't nobody want to be a nigga. And that's the God knows truth. Even when it comes to the preach game. Got all these daggone white pastors that want to be black, sound black, shout black, got black people doing music, but don't want to even rep the community. Don't even want to take up the cause. Save the black soul, but don't do nothing for the black body. And then you wonder why? Man, please. Yo, let me play this so you guys can understand and know. Surely the Lord God does nothing, nothing, without revealing his purpose to his servants, the prophets. And I have been interviewing prophet after prophet that I trust that has been saying without blinking an eye, Donald Trump will have two terms. President Trump is going to win. But first of all, I want to say without question, Trump is going to win the election. Uh, and uh, that doesn't mean you sit home and don't vote. That, that, that means you get out and do everything you can to work. But he's going to win. That's, I think, a given. And Suddenly, I saw a vision. And the Lord began to speak to me about the United States again. And he said, three powerful prince angels are stationed with President Trump. And they will strengthen him and he will triumph. Mr. Trump should continue for another term for God's purposes to be done for this nation, which means they are not finished yet. God wants to give you another four years of grace. At 4.30, the Lord said to me, I am going to give your president a second win. A win that you will be the president again. There might have been a little bit of a setback, but that was nothing. It was a setup for the comeback. Come a on. double win. I decree and declare that right now. It's Come on. Game. Come on. And I love what President Trump always says. He says, you're going to get sick and tired of winning if there is such a thing. And that's going to be the same way for the army of God. It's going to be victory after victory after victory. Will it be an eight-year presidency? Absolutely. Absolutely we will. Uh, you're sure about that? Yeah, I'm sure about that because there's going to be no doubt he's going to sail right in for the first, second term. As God's people... You have to pray because that's, um, I believe that's the final pressure on the president of the United States. That's the final pressure. If he can get through this, if he doesn't give up, he wins. I think God brought him here for this season, uh, for these four years. I'm just asking that God would uh, spare this country for another four years to give us a, a little bit more time uh, to do the work before the storm hits. And first of all, uh, God uses uh, men. He works through men. And I believe uh, Donald Trump is the president uh, for a reason. I think God has put him in this position. I think we're going to hear church bells ringing all over the Ooh, United yeah. States. People are going to be clicking up their heels. It is going to be victory. I believe that the Lord our God has sealed this election in the heavenlies, and we are going to be rejoicing. I believe, number one, he will be a two-term president. Yes, there are angels posted inside and outside every every place, every voting precinct, and certainly around the White House, 100,000 of them, sentinels wow. are here. Wow. And everywhere they, they even carry Trump's plane when it flies. So God is adamant about making sure that he remains here and he is adamant. And I do know many people were moved upon the day of the election to vote for Trump.
Donald Trump has unfinished business in the nations. And I believe you will not let someone who has stood with Israel and stood with Christians, you will not let them be ingloriously uh, beaten and embarrassed by your enemies. I got to stop. I'm serious. Let me go back. The one thing that I want you guys to understand is that I want you to go on YouTube. And the person that made this video was called Biden Victory Prophets who got it right and wrong. And it's by Tawia. I can't pronounce the uh, the last name, but but look for it. It's Biden Victory Prophets who got it right and wrong. And it's by a person named Tawia. It's a YouTube video. Also, look at that video as well as Larry Reed Live's most recent video with Bishop Jordan. So I'm telling you, check out this video because... I'm telling you, it's, I'm telling you, it's a compilation of all the prophets that have said what thus saith the Lord. And just like I told you in Amos 3 and 7, surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. So that is the scripture that they're going on. But the one thing that I want you guys to understand is this, is that Even prophecies have conditions. Even prophecies have windows. Just like blessings have windows. They're time sensitive. So even though that may have been the word of the Lord, you think that it's not time sensitive, that there's not conditions that need to be met in order for that word to come to pass. Because even Jesus said, cast your net on the right side. But Peter said, okay, nevertheless, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll cast the net. Jesus said nets. He gave them a specific instruction to do. But yet the crazy thing that I'm trying to get you guys to understand is this, is that even though a word of the Lord does come, That word of the Lord at times is conditional upon you. Are you going to work it? Are you going to believe it? Are you going to cultivate that thing? And I believe that his first four years was the conditions. Okay, let's see what you're going to do. You're in. And depending on what you do, these four years will depend whether or not you're going to get a second run. So my question is, what has been done? Seriously, what has been done when we say that he is the most pro-black president ever? And even though, you know, we say we have the first step plan and we got black people out of jail, my question is, where is the black person that is on the bench? And we talk about this person getting out and that person getting out and trying to say that President Obama never did anything. President Obama did get more people out than President Trump. You just have to look at the numbers. President Obama gave you the Affordable Care Act, but yet President Trump is trying to take it down and he does not have any plan in place for the welfare of the people. When it came to issues Issues of racism that could have been dealt with. There was nothing said. There was nothing done. Even legislation. The anti-lynching bill. He never told the people that were blocking it to stand down. But yet you say, this is King Cyrus and he has the welfare of our people. And he has the welfare of Israel. But yet, when it comes to Israel, nobody wants to talk about the Palestinians. Nobody even really wants to talk about the Ethiopian Jews. But yet, this is where we are. So, you could have said something about Charlottesville, other than there's good people on both sides. You could have said something nice about Africa instead of calling it a shithole country. You could have said something nice about Colin Kaepernick and all the other other NFL players instead of fire those sons of bitches. Talking about LeBron James. 
But yet the crazy thing about it is that you parade the black celebrity, but don't want to protect the black community. So my question is, what has happened in the four years to get you eight, to get you another four? When was America ever great for black people? Because the crazy thing about it is that when George Floyd happened and now all these murals and everything is up, you would think that there will be legislation to say, okay, this is what we got to do. But yet, no. I'm the president of law and order. When the shooting starts, when the looting starts, the shooting starts. That's what he said. When the looting starts, the shooting starts. I am the president of law and order. Who do you think that's directed at? Seriously. Who do you think that's directed at? But yet, this is why. This is why I question the prophets. This is why I I question the apostles. Because I'm going to tell you, yo, this is how it is. Everybody has to say the same thing. Because the word of the Lord says, the Bible says, by your words shall you be justified and by your words shall you be condemned. By the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be justified. That's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible says. But yet the crazy thing about it is that, and this is what I want you guys to peep this. Because you got to understand the money and the, and the access and the stages that are connected to it. Because here it is, you got a person that's saying one thing, and if I'm a part of their camp, I got to say the same thing. Even though God may be showing me something different. I better line up. Because if I don't line up, that means money's going to dry up. That means speaking engagement's going to dry up. That means that appearances are going to dry up. Because I've made a career out of ministry. I'm full time in this. So I can't afford to not be in line with the houses and the, and, 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 and the school teachers and the mentors that I'm with. Even though I may feel as though that that word is out of line. Even though I know that God gave me something different. I'm going to give you a scenario. I'm in Copeland's camp. You think I'm going to say something different? Lose my access? Because I'm going to tell you, if you can preach on his stage and get on his show, it's a wrap. Same thing with Sid Ross. Same thing with 700 Club, Pat Robertson. It's a wrap. So you think I'm going to blow my money? I'm going to say what they say. And I, and even though I may look like a false prophet, at least I'm still making money. But that's what I mean when I say you got to weigh people's motives. You got to weigh people's motives. When they were fighting to get them doors open, what you think that was about? It wasn't about you. It was about that money. It was. It's always about money. I don't care what it what they say. It's always about money. Because it's about what you're going to buy into. I got something to give. I got something to sell. You willing to buy it? Because the crazy thing is, is that you still got people that are willing to not only put themselves at risk, but put you at risk. And all the while, while you giving them a dollar, you, you, you putting your own soul and your body at risk. Because of lies. Because of delusion. And that's the God knows truth. Man, let me play this clip. We break and divide every demonic confederacy against the election, against America, against that who you have declared to be in the White House. We break it up in the name of Jesus. And this Paul we lose the confusion prayer. into every demonic confederacy directed right now at this election, directed specifically at the six states. We come against people that are working in high levels right now with demonic confederacies and secrecies and demonic plans and networks. We break it up and we command that it be exposed right now in the name of Jesus. 
strike and strike. But angels have even just been dispatched from Africa right now. Africa right now. Africa right now. From Africa right now. They're coming here. They're coming here. In the name of Jesus from South America. They're coming here. They're coming here. They're coming here. They're coming here. From Africa. From South America. Angelic forces. Angelic reinforcement. Angelic reinforcement. Angelic reinforcement. Pika hata anda ata. Orobata rata anda eke eke manda rasata. For I hear the sound of victory. 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 You know, the crazy thing about it is that they have made that a remix. Seriously. They have made that a remix. And one thing that I want you guys to understand is this, is that you got to know beyond a shadow of a doubt where these people are coming from. Because the crazy thing is, is that when you begin to look at the history of Paula White and her relationship with President Trump, she said, if I say anything to President Trump, I feel as though that I'm speaking against God. So in other words, you cannot speak truth to power. And the reason why a lot of people will not speak truth, will not speak truth to power is because they're indebted to them. You can't speak truth to somebody that you owe. And that's the God knows truth. Man, oh my God. You can't do it. You cannot speak truth to power that you owe. If they made you, you can't speak to them. And this is the reason why that a lot of these prophets, even though they may feel as though now, I feel like God is saying something else. They got to line up. Because that money is at stake. Let me give you another scripture. 1 Corinthians 14, 29 and 33. Let the prophets speak two or three and let the other judge. If anything be revealed to another that sitteth by, let the first hold his peace. For ye may all prophesy one by one that all may learn and all may be comforted. And the spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophets for God is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all the churches of the saints. God is not the author of confusion. This is confusion. This is confusion. When you say thus saith the Lord that God is going to give president Trump a second term, but yet on election day, you see different results. And there are people that are saying, whose report you're going to believe. And there are people who are using scriptures in Esther that are saying, yeah, even though an edict came out, another edict came out. The edict that Haman gave, and then the edict that, that, that the king gave for the people to protect themselves and fight. That's what's happening right now. That's why you have a million MAGA marchers in Washington. And the crazy thing about it is that you have a pandemic going on. And the only thing our president has said is a little bit of stuff about the pandemic. He's been very vocal about being robbed of the election, saying that it was rigged. And he was saying that it was rigged when he won. So my question is, who can you believe? Who can you believe when there's lies and there's delusion? When it came to the coronavirus, lie. Knew about it, but didn't didn't say anything. Lie. But yet, you stand by, and you go with that. Called the Proud Boys out at a debate. But you go with that. And my question is, when are the Proud Boys going to be on the Believer's Voice of Victory? Because you didn't have Michelle Bachman on there. And she talking against the LGBTQ community. And my thing is, even though there may be some people that uh, disagree with that type of lifestyle, who are we to demonize? Because I look at it like this. If you could talk about that community, what happens when you talk about my community? What happens when you start talking about black people? What happens when you start uh, saying urban communities? What happens when you start saying illegal aliens? Because that's the new term for nigger now. 
And the crazy thing about it is that it's okay. It's okay on that platform. And the crazy thing that gets me is that you don't look at the history of racism that has been in the church. I definitely got a bone to pick with Kenneth Copeland and and those in the word of faith movement. Because the one thing that I will say is this, is that when Fred Price, Apostle Fred Price was, was speaking about race, religion, and racism, he told the truth. And they tried to have him banned. And they boycotted him. Black and white. Tried to get him taken off of TV. Blackballed him. But yet this is your Christian brother. And this is what I mean when I say. Christians kill their own. I'm like man yo. It's okay as long as we. Shouting and dancing. But as soon as we start talking real issues, oh, no, uh uh-uh. And the one thing that Fred Price said is this, is that there will never be reconciliation without recognition. And I agree with that. Because we got all these teachers, all everybody talking reconciliation, and I appreciate that. And I'm not trying to spit or piss on, on none of that. But my thing is, is that how is it that we can preach reconciliation when there is a spirit of inferiority that has been in this land for years and even in the church? Because why is it that you have black people that will follow a white pastor, but you will not have white people follow a black pastor? Seriously. Because there are some people right now that feel as though, no, I'm better than that. And that's the spirit of superiority. And then we as black people deal with the spirit of inferiority because of what has happened to us through slavery, Jim Crow, and the black codes. And then we have some people black that say, oh, that's just victim mentality. That's this, that's that. And it don't exist because it ain't never happened to me. Some of you are so daggone insulated that, yeah, you don't have to deal with that. You don't have to deal with it because you lost touch with your community a long time ago. And somebody then gave you access. Somebody then gave you black privilege. And now you have weaponized your black privilege to attack your own community. Your skin may be black, but you have a white supremacist soul. Yeah, I said it. I'm saying it to every black man and every black woman that is like that. You've been given access. You have black privilege but yet you attack your own community when you should be using your black privilege to bring your people above the scratch line and empower and impart, but instead you attack. And then, and then the crazy thing about it is that when they make fun of the community, you sit back and laugh with them. You sit back and laugh, you sit back and you attack, but yet will not say anything about what's happening on the other side. When you see the racism, when you see the white supremacy, when you see the words, you see the words in print, you see, you hear the words, you won't say anything because you've been given and your most concern is, hey, it's about me. I, I got to look after me. Ain't about the community, man, please. Some of y'all just looking for a check and 15 minutes of fame and a photo op. Yeah, I said it. I'm going to give you another scripture for we know in part and we prophesy in part. And that is first Corinthians 13 and nine. And so the one thing that I will say this is that, yeah, we have faith to see prophetic words come to pass, but there are certain conditions that must be met. So my question is where was the white church? Where was the evangelical church for Tamir rights? If you're interested in abortion, where was the, where was the church for him? Why didn't you protect his family when the news media demonized him? Where was the church for Breonna Taylor? When it, when, when her blood was shed and yet you, and yet a black man was used to, to, to say that her murder was justified. Where was the church for her? Where was the evangelical church for George Floyd when he cried out? And the crazy thing that gets me is that you have people in other countries 
that speak louder than the evangelical and white church here in America. But yet we are the land of the free and the home of the brave. Where are you? Seriously, where are you? And then you prophesy and say that President Trump needs to be reelected again? When these are the things that have been left undone? And then you and then you say that God is not happy about the blood that is spilled in the streets? What about the black blood? I get the babies. I get that. But how are you going to tell me that you are pro-life, but yet you're okay with road cops killing black people? Bodies, brown bodies. And you cool with the death penalty. Tell me that one. Seriously, I'm waiting on that one. Seriously. I do believe that President Trump He spoke prophetically when he said that he was going to drain the swamp because the swamp has been drained. And what has been revealed is the motivations in the hearts of men in this country from the white house to the church house. He has made the the condition and the atmosphere for racist people to come out and be themselves and show their racism at full steam, full blast. He has made it comfortable to, to, to allow division to happen in our country to the points where a second civil war may happen. He has made it comfortable to the place, whereas we could pretty much have two presidents at once because he's already saying, I'm not going to stand down. So my question is, is the church going to support that? Because the Bible says that a house divided against itself shall fall. So are you with the fall of America? Because you didn't get your way? Because that's what's happening. And the crazy thing about it is that we use scriptures to justify everything. And then you have some men of God. They're attacking everybody. And the crazy thing is, is that these are men of God. You're supposed to represent the church. I sit up here and tell people they need to get a backbone and, and, and call people out and sissies and stuff like that. Man, please. And then the crazy thing is, is that you're giving yourselves over to conspiracy theories that can't even be proven. And then you take them to court and still lose with the conspiracy theory. Meanwhile, people sitting back laughing at the church. And then you wonder why we have atheists and agnostics and the black Hebrews say what they say. The reason why they say what they say, and I totally get it, is because they study the pattern of America. They have studied the patterns of oppression. They have studied the patterns of the white community. And I'm going to tell you right now, man, That pattern ain't been good for black people for a long time. I don't care if President Obama been president twice. Ain't never been good. Still ain't going to be good. So you want to talk reconciliation? There has to be recognition first. You got to recognize our humanity. Because as long as you don't recognize our humanity, you will never know our suffering. You will never hear the cries of our suffering. You will never empathize or have compassion towards us because you do not recognize. And then you put a label on us to give us lies and accuracies about who we are. And that only justifies the fact that you can call yourself superior. Even though God has said in his word that we are made out of one blood and one flesh. But yet you feel as though that black is inferior. White is superior. And then you have prophets that co-sign on that mess. White supremacist prophets, white supremacist nationalism prophets in the house of God. I'm going to tell you right now, if you black, you need to come up out of every one of them schools and houses.
Yeah, I said it. Because how is it that you can stay silent and support rhetoric like that and still say that God is with that? Seriously, I, 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 I'm trying to figure that one out. Because the Bible does say, come, let us reason together. There has not been a reasoning of evangelicals and those who are for social justice in a long time. You attack Black Lives Matter. If you've been doing what you're supposed to do as a church, Black Lives Matter will not be relevant. You say it's of the devil. But let me ask you this. How is it that all lives can matter when you got a problem with the black ones? When you won't even say anything about the black life. But yet you want the money. You want that green dollar. You want that green back. But you rather silent. You're silent. When a, when, when, when a white officer has his knee on the neck of a black man. And now I know why. That saying goes, the man got his knee on me. His man, you know, the man, the man, the man won't let me up. The white man holding me down. I, I get that now. Oh, yeah, I, they might tag this as hate speech. I don't know how long this episode going to be up. But the one thing I do know is this. At the end of the day, you're going to know because I didn't gave you scripture after scripture after scripture. Let me give you this one. Deuteronomy 18.22 When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken. But the prophet has spoken it presumptuously, thou shalt not be afraid of him. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid when they up here calling angels out of Africa. Don't be afraid. And the crazy thing that gets me with that is, how is it that you can call angels from Africa, but yet the man that you say that God set up curses Africa? So in other words, that prayer got just hit the ceiling. It got short-circuited because you cannot curse and then call something that you cursed. Call it to help. You can't, you can't call a curse to help you. You called, that man called and said, Shit, whole country talking about Africa, but yet you want to call the African angels? Puerto Rico needed help, and yet we throwing paper towels, and we call the angels out of South America. And then we talk about rapists coming into our country, illegal uh, aliens. We putting kids in cages. And then we call upon the angels of South America. But yet we got this charismatic witchcraft going on in the church, in the Americas, trying to silence the voice of the people. Presumptuous. The definition of presumptuous is this. Failing to observe the limits of what is permitted or appropriate. What happened is these prophets failed to observe the limits because I'm going to take you back up here to first Corinthians 13 and nine for we know in part and we prophesy in part, but they failed to observe the limits of what is permitted or appropriate. My question is, why is it that you say a definite if God ain't said that? Why is it that you have to stand on one side? Or another side. Why is it that you can't stand in the middle? Because the one thing that I saw when I look at the story of the angel that 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 was running through Israel is when David saw him, he said, I saw an angel standing between heaven and earth. Why is it that you can't stand between heaven and earth as the prophet of the Lord, as the prophet of God? Not on one side, not on the other side, but standing in between the heaven and the earth. Not giving your allegiance to it. I've been guilty myself and I had to repent because I found myself going down that road when I call myself a prophet to the streets, a prophet for the community. And I ain't gonna lie, it's a thin line. 
especially if your convictions and your theology is along that line. And I totally get it. But we have to get to the place where we represent God and not party. Because what has happened right now is that these men and these women have now given their allegiance and made an idol out of the party. You made an idol out of the party. You made an idol out of President Trump. Some of you men are even calling him father. Seriously, calling him father. Some of you men have got a mandate over your life. You calling that worldly man your father. Seriously. And then some of you, you think that he's your friend. And I'm telling you, yo, let, let me add, let me just ask you this. If you weren't in the position where you are right now, would he even recognize you? Seriously. I want to know that if you weren't doing what you were doing or have the position that you have in life, would he even recognize you? Because my question is, where's diamond and silk? My question is, where's Candace Owens? Seriously. My question is, where's the proof? Where's the concrete proof that's going to win a court case? And then the crazy thing is, is that you are attacking even people in your own party. Like in Georgia. And this is what I mean when I say that a house divided against itself cannot stand. So how is it that your party is going to be able to stand? And then you have some even in in, in the church arena who are saying, you know what? I'm getting out of this because it's getting crazy. But then you got some people that are staying the course. So I'm telling you, people, you better wake up. Because at the end of the day, we fail to realize that God is God has judged us. That the judgment of God is moving in the earth. And yet we still have men that are trying to, to, to turn. God's judging hand away. And these are the same men that had platforms that could have did something about the things that were happening among the people in, in communities, but yet stay silent. But yet want to take and blow on Corona and Corona ain't went nowhere. Want to take and laugh about the president elect. And the crazy thing, they, they using that for a remix too. And, 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 and this is what saddens me because there are so many black men, ministers, word of faith ministers that look up to Kenneth Hagin, to Kenneth Copeland, to all of these, you know, ministers. And then they have aligned themselves with the political agenda. And now they preach nationalism. They preach in nationalism. When was Christianity mixed with, when has it ever become nationalist? Seriously, please tell me. When has our call, when has our call gotten us to the place where now God has called us to defend the constitution? When is that? When, when did that happen? Because I hear that too, that, that God has called me to defend the constitution. My question is, if all people are created equal, then why are you still staying silent when you see these rogue police? Because I'm going to tell you, man, look, the condition in our country didn't just start with President Donald Trump. This has been like this for a long time. And the crazy thing that gets me is that when I look at Martin Luther King, I ask myself, where were the, where were the, the, the ministers the charismatic ministers, the Pentecostal ministers, the white ministers that could have walked with him, that could have helped him. Where were these men at that could lay hands on the sick, that had tent revivals all over the place? But yet during his time, Martin Luther King's time, it was very few. Some 
helped financially, but they could not be seen with him. Because if they were seen with him, then they will be labeled as a traitor. And this is what I mean. Nobody want to put their money at risk. I don't care how spiritual you are. I get it. But but if you're going to sit up here and say the Lord said and not address the things that are really happening, not address all the things that are happening, then I, then I question your integrity. I question it. I question your authenticity. So something got to give. Let me give you this, and this is the last scripture I'm going to do. 2 Thessalonians 2, verses 7 to 12. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked one be revealed, who the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause shall God send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. You had pleasure in unrighteousness. And then wonder why you're looking like you're being damned and, and criticized and made a fool out of. You okay with the division in this country. And then you want to sit up here and curse, saying that the news media is of the devil, fake news, this, fake news, that. But the crazy thing is, is that in 2016, you were in agreement with it. You were were in agreement with all the news outlets. Man, please, ain't nobody heard nothing about Newsmax until now. And then the crazy thing is, is that they are giving false projections and lies because they have an agenda. Yeah, I said it. So I'm going to tell you, people of God, you have to make your calling an election sure because I'm going to tell you, truth is going to be a commodity. Because I'm going to tell you, when it comes to media, it's, it's, and, I, and I said this on Sunday, it's not about truth and accuracy any longer. It's about who can get it out here first. I'm serious. I'm really starting to believe that. I remember Denzel Washington says something like that along those lines. It's not even about integrity anymore. It's about who can get it out first. And it don't have to be true. It, we just got to get it out first. Because people know that if you control the narrative, you control people's opinion. If you can control the media, if you have ownership, then you can control the narrative. And so what is being projected is that the election was rigged. The election was rigged. And the crazy thing that I want you to see is this, is that people are being bewitched. So I'm going to tell you, oh, foolish Americans, who have bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? O oh, foolish prophets, O oh, foolish apostles, who have bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Where was the judging of the prophets? Where was the judging of that prophecy? The conditions were not met. And then you wonder why the word of the Lord fell. And now we're looking like, you know, some of us is like, yo, man, I hope something happens with this electoral college. And then some of y'all, y'all got a backup word. Well, you know, I, I believe that God is going to give it to President Trump in 2024. That's the second term. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for that one. But, you know, we'll believe it and we'll still support because that's just who we are. We need something to hold on to because the one thing that I want you to see is this, is that people are, are in fear right now. Fear has brought out the worst in people or people are afraid they're, they're losing power. They're losing, you know, they're, they're feeling like we're losing America. That, that my way of living is not going to be the same. My way of life is lost. My kids won't have anything. That's why you seeing what you seeing today, because it's fear. 
It's fear. Oh yeah, this is the judgment of God walking through the earth. And this is prophecy being manifested. Yo, yeah, this is yeah, this is 2020. This is clarity. Oh, oh yeah, it's clear now. I'm going to tell you right now. If you don't know what it is, I can't tell you. Oh, this is clarity, all right. Everything has been revealed. The, 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 the motives, the manners, the message, and the method. These are the four M's that my pastor, Pastor George Hilton, taught us. These are the things that are being revealed. The manners, the motives, the methods, and the messages. These four things are being revealed. And I understand why people got stuff boarded up because if the electoral college goes down, it's going to be crazy seeing MAGA people protest when they was talking about Black Lives Matter. So my question is, are you going to say the same thing about these people like you said about the Black Lives Matter protests and riots in cities? We're going to see what happens. Oh, yeah, we, we definitely going to see. But the one thing I want you guys to understand is this, is that a house divided against itself cannot stand. The military is being divided. Secret service is being divided. People are not given access to, to information to help the transition. All the while, people are dying around us. And we just thinking about, in, the, in our current president, President Trump is only thinking about himself. And I said this a long time ago. I said, that man is not Democrat, nor is he Republican. He is about himself. And he just happens to represent the Republican Party, and he's the loudest voice. So this is the reason why that everybody is lining up. Because racism is a team sport. Nationalism has, has, has combined with racism and white supremacy. And now it is a team sport. And every team needs a chaplain. And that's why you have these prophets. And yeah, I said it. But like I want you guys, like I said, yo, look at the YouTube videos. Look at the Paula White video. I got that from um, Entertainment. Look at the um, other video. I said the lady's name earlier. And then definitely uh, look at uh, Larry Reed Live's video. Because you can get a clear understanding, even better from what I've said, about the prophets and the condition of the church. Because the one thing, man, oh, look, we can't allow ourselves to get lax, even though there may be a vaccine. And I'm going to be honest, I'm not taking no vaccine. I'm not taking no vaccine until I've seen long-term effects. I'm, I'm like, nah, man, mm -mm. I, I want to see how I do with y'all first. Cause I, I, I'll be dag if, 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 you know, y'all start taking them shots and next thing you know, you got, I am legend happening. Uh-uh, no, oh, hell no. Not me. But the crazy thing about it is that you got to look at the communities that are affected. It's us. Us that make the food. Us that cut the hair. Us that, that maintain the lawns. Us that work at grocery stores. Us that work in retail. Us. Us that have to take our kids to daycare. Us that have to be out here because we are essential and we don't have the luxury of working from home. It's us because there is a difference between people saying what God said and what the Bible says, because I'm going to tell you this, the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. So my question is, if the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus, then if, if, if Jesus has said this, if Jesus has authored this, if Jesus has sanctioned this, then why is it that Jesus' words ain't coming to pass? You have to ask yourself, has God said this or has man said this? If this is the spirit of prophecy, then the spirit of prophecy should line up with the words and there should be agreement and there shouldn't be no division. But some people will say, well, that's just the church in the world. But it's us now because you got people even in church questioning what's going on. And these are big name people that are being questioned. And that's the God knows truth, man. So, hey, with that people, I just want to say, hey, we out. <laughs>
walk in the truth that makes you free every day. Follow Brother Leon on all social media outlets.